Welcome fans of flip clocks to this historic and international version of a flip clock fans video featuring native speakers from four different countries across the globe. This month in history, April 1966, the world-renowned Horological Journal of the British Horological Institute publishes its first and last article about a flip clock. This day in history, April 11, 1814. Following a series of major military losses by France under Napoleon Bonaparte during the War of the Sixth Coalition, the Treaty of Fontainebleau was signed by representatives of France, Austria, Russia, and Prussia, signaling the end of Napoleon's rule as Emperor of France and banishing him to exile on the island of Elba off the coast of Italy. What does this have to do with flip clocks? Let's make it happen. Mais qu'est alors cette vérité historique, la plupart du temps Une fable convenue, ainsi qu'on l'a dit fort ingénieusement. Napoléon Bonaparte. History is a set of agreed upon lies. History is a set of agreed upon lies. Maybe that's true about the history of flip clocks too. But what is certain, as the history of flip clock invention and marketing unfolded, few thought it worth the time to document. For this reason, except for newspaper and magazine advertisements and precious few journal articles, modern collectors of flip clocks have little to study when determining the history of a particular clock, except for attempts at logical conclusions based on their own experience and experience of others. In other words, often agreed upon lies. What follows is my personal history of trying to find a particular journal about a certain flip clock, but the story contains an amazing plot twist Perhaps coincidence, maybe fate, but in the end it's the fantastic story of the revelation of a rare flip clock and a crazed flip clock fan. The first horological publication to my knowledge that printed a flip clock related article was the Bulletin of the National Association of Watch and Clock Collectors Incorporated in October 1964. This comprehensive article by Charles O. Terwilliger Jr. contained the detailed history of the Plato clock and its inventor, Eugene L. Fitch. That would be the first and last time the National Association of Watch and Clock Collectors mentioned a flip clock in their publication. I get the impression that they would like to pretend they never published it. Why would I say such a thing? Perhaps because the National Association of Watch and Clock Collectors Museum, the largest in North America, only features one flip clock, an early American Plato clock, and they keep it in the novelty clock section among an assortment of odd clocks. The second published article that I became aware of was an alleged write-up about a flip clock in the esteemed Horological Journal of April 1966. Background History Established in 1858 to promote horology, the British Horological Institute affirms that their primary purpose today revolves around providing education. Toward this aim, the Horological Journal provides peer-reviewed articles on historical and contemporary clock and watchmaking servicing, repair, restoration, and conservation. The British Horological Institute claims that the Horological Journal is the world's oldest continuously published technical journal. First published in September 1858, the Horological Journal has appeared monthly ever since, without fail. Newly published journals are available only to members of the British Horological Institute. I had read somewhere, who knows where, someplace on the internet, that the Horological Journal dated April 1966 contained an article covering the Copal Castle on 201 flip clock, but no further details regarding this article could be found. Not only this, while there are numerous places to obtain back issues of past issues of the Horological Journal, this particular journal always seemed unavailable. I actually searched for years. It seemed like a conspiracy. The British Horological Institute must have tried to destroy all the evidence of this article. To the best of my knowledge, this article represents the first and last mention of a flip clock in the annals of the famed horological journal. Most likely, the author was exiled to the island of Elba. After reading this little personal history of mine, you may be able to appreciate the shock and awe I experienced upon discovering an online vendor selling an actual copy of the April 1966 horological journal. The price, including shipping from Great Britain to the United States, was no more than $10. I would have paid four to five times that amount. I had been looking for this journal for about five years, I suppose. What I found upon receiving this rare volume left me flabbergasted. On page 8, I found a 1193-word write-up about a flip clock. 
As a comparison, the previously mentioned article about Plato clocks contained over 3,800 words. The title of this horological journal piece? The Copal Caslon, written by W.G. Pike. Firstly, yes, I did count the words. There are computer programs that can do this. But secondly, and more importantly, the journal piece did not cover the Caslon 201. Of course, I should have figured this out. The Copal Company produced the Caslon 101, Japan's first digital clock, in 1965. This according to the history section of the NIDAC Copal Corporation website. The author of the journal write-up does not mention a model number, only identifying the clock as the Copal Caslon. The article includes a nice detailed diagram of the clock, as well as a mediocre quality picture of the clock with the front cover removed. The author, W.G. Pike, goes into great detail describing the clock. This pretty much sums up the bulk of the story, aside from a few introductory comments, the lame pun, and ending summary information about the clock retail price and the local importer of the clock. It became clear to me that the clock described had to be the Caslon 101 but it was also clearly apparent that the clock was not exactly like the typical Caslon 101s with which many of us are familiar. Reviewing the review. We will use the actual words of W.G. Pike, then see how they compare to known specimens of the Copal Caslon 101. The Copal Caslon, a simple digital clock from Japan. Reviewed by W.G. Pike. The most recent arrival from our Far Eastern horological rivals is a small digital desk clock. In a coloured plastic case with the figures arranged horizontally, the clock has an up-to-the-minute look. Well, I actually do appreciate a good play on words or a pun, but besides this, it seems curious that he refers to the Japanese clockmakers as their, quote, rivals. Not their cohorts, friends, or associates, but their rivals. At the time this article was written, the war had ended only about 20 years previously. Large black figures on a white background can be easily read by day or night, as the makers have included a small neon lamp, which gives a permanent glow immediately the clock is switched on. Minutes and hours advanced by the old-time method of flipping over small cards, a method with which many older readers will be familiar. But unlike earlier clocks, the driving force in this clock is a small synchronous motor. This sounds familiar. The grandfather of all flip clocks, the ever-ready Plato clock, and many European variants of this early flip clock from this period, manufactured as early as 1903, employed wind-up brass clockworks. To take the clock apart requires no skill. A single screw at the base is all that holds the halves of the case together, and two screws hold the complete movement in the back half of the case. Okay, this is a little different. Typical castlons have two screws holding the front and back pieces together. And there's a little bit of a trick to get them apart without damaging the case because they snap together and hold firmly. The general layout is tidy, and the extensive use of brass is conspicuous. He said tidy. Yes, the Caslon clocks used up most of the space inside the clock. These were neat little clocks. At the time, a novel, compact little design. We shouldn't take this for granted. The Caslon 101, Japan's earliest flip clock, was designed by the now-famous Japanese designer, Riki Watanabe. Smooth and compact, these clocks were trendsetters. Background history. The designer of the Copal Caslon 101, the world-renowned designer and pioneer of Japanese design, Riki Watanabe. Riki Watanabe was a distinguished Japanese industrial designer, often compared to the American designers Charles and Ray Eames, who passed away in 2013 at 101 years of age. Considered a pioneer of post-Second World War Japanese design, in a time when the word or concept of design was little used in Japan, Watanabe was initially made famous by furniture design. The Watanabe name eventually became established and well-respected in the clock and especially the watch design world. You can still find new Riki Watanabe-inspired watches, particularly by Seiko. As a pioneer of modern Japanese design, Riki Watanabe made great contributions to the recognition of design in Japan such as the establishment of the Japan Industrial Designers Association. He received many awards, including the Japanese Medal of Honor with Purple Ribbon, awarded by the government of Japan. In 1964, Watanabe designed the Copal Caslon 101. It should be noted that Riki Watanabe also later designed the Caslon 601 in 1967 and the Copal Model C61 in 1973. Now back to Mr. W.G. Pike. 
For the benefit of those who are not conversant with the principle of this clock or its older counterpart, a vertical clock sometimes called the Everready, the following explanation will help. Mr. Pike is speaking here of what we collectors most often now call the Plato clock. It seems that he may not have been familiar with the later flip clocks produced by the New Haven Clock Company of Connecticut. We must not forget the internet did not exist when W.G. penned this article. For certain, poor Mr. Pike initially banged out this piece on an old manual typewriter. A little background history. The earliest flip clocks, the Plato clocks, looked like 18th century carriage clocks. Years later, in the late 1930s, the New Haven Clock Company produced flip clocks that have been said to have an art deco look by some. These were made of wood, metal, and glass, and besides the digits, would look like antiques to the modern eye. The Plato clock's numbers flipped horizontally like pages of a book, while New Haven clocks essentially flipped downward like flip clocks of today. It's important to understand that the Japanese did not invent the flip clock, but they did design the first flip clocks that kicked off the flip clock craze of the 1970s. In addition, Coppel made most of the clock mechanisms used by most makers of clocks and clock radios worldwide. These clock mechanisms and synchronous motors were, without question, that good. The hour cage holds only 12 hours, but each hour is allotted five cards, so that during one complete revolution of the minute cage, five hour cards are flipped over. Now this is strange. There are many Caslon 101s with 24 hours, and others using the 12 hour system more common in the United States, with even some clocks having both AM and PM cards. And in both of these, there are typically only two cards per each hour in the clocks, not five. The low-speed, self-starting synchronous motor, which runs at 333 and a third RPM at 50 cycles per second, is fixed to a triangular-shaped aluminium plate by three screws. Thank you, Mr. Pike. Many flip clock fans have wondered about the speed of these little copal synchronous motors, and you have confirmed this for us. We now know that the 50 hertz version runs at 333 and a third RPM and the 60 hertz version at 400 RPM. But what is this about a triangular shaped aluminium plate and three screws? One of the more interesting features of this clock is the ease with which it can be altered to operate on a frequency of either 50 cycles per second, as used in this country, or 60 cycles per second, as used in the United States and some other countries. Alteration is simple. First, remove the nuts, Q, holding the motor base plate to its supports. At one end of this plate, the figures 50 and 60 are engraved. When the local frequency has been determined, place either the 50 or 60 against the pillar and replace the nuts. Changing the base plate from the 50 position to the 60 position means that the worm wheel on the rotor arbor will engage the larger of the two fabric wheels, R. With the base of the plate in the 50 position, the worm wheel will drive the smaller of the two fabric wheels. No Caslon 101s that I had previously encountered had the ability to be switched between 50 and 60 Hz operation. While many other models of flip clocks do have this ability via a throw switch that changes the gearing before reaching the clock mechanisms, the Caslons were typically made either for use with 50 or 60 Hz, not both. And in known versions of these clocks, there are no worm gears or fabric wheels and no way or reason to manually alter the position of the motor. These reported features would be very foreign to your typical Cobalt Caslon flip clock collector of today. This unusual clock has the equally unusual name, Caslon, and it comes to us from the Copal Co. Limited of Tokyo. He is right here. The Caslon 101 was unusual in that it was a trendsetter, but the name Caslon cannot be said to be strange or uncommon. But due to a lack of internet access in 1966, again we will give Mr. Pike a pass on his assertion that the name Caslon is unusual. However, it seems that he could have picked up an encyclopedia and took a look. Caslon describes a font designed by William Caslon in 1722. Historically, this font appeared extensively throughout the British Empire in the early 18th century. Furthermore, the Caslon font received wide usage in American colonies and actually served as the font that appeared on the U.S. Declaration of Independence. The Copal Company selected the famous Caslon font number style for the digits of their earliest clocks, a font which still looks great in these clocks, with the clock receiving its model name from this font. The clock retails at £9, 19 shillings, 6 pence. Expensive? It rather depends on who is buying it. This pound, shilling, and pence thing was the old-style English monetary system. Prior to February 15, 1971, there were 12 pennies, or pence, to the shilling, and 20 shillings to the pound. 
so that would be 240 pence to the pound. Since that time, the pound went decimal, and there are 100 pence to the British pound. Be that as it may, the price quoted by WG would be just over $195 in today's dollars. The plot thickens. And now, here's the plot twist I alluded to earlier. The very day the horological journal arrived at my home, I noticed a very unusual clock for sale online. The seller, a well-known and very knowledgeable clock restorer and reseller of flip clocks, known online as Flip Clock NL or Flip Clock EU, he indicated that the clock for sale looked like a Castle on 101, but not exactly. With all his experience, he confided that he had never seen such a clock before and doubted that he would ever find another. I stared in disbelief. No way! Could this be possible? Less than one week later, that very clock made it into my hands. I figured that the clock might be similar to the clock described in the horological journal. Maybe the article described the first generation, and this clock I just purchased would be the second generation, and the ones we're more familiar with perhaps could represent the third. But no, after examination I realized that the clock was exactly as described in the journal. I had in my hands a piece of flip clock history. Do you get it? I would venture to say that if you made it this far into the story, you get it. Imagine me pointing to the journal, pointing to my newfound clock, relating my good fortune to my family and friends who, well, let's just say that they are not flip clock fans. They nodded their heads and gave me an unenthusiastic, wow, that's cool, and that was it. They obviously did not get it. This clock is an awesome find and probably belongs in a flip clock museum if there were such a thing. Let's review the clock we now have in our hands and compare it to the one described in the journal article. Here's the single screw holding the two halves of the case together and disassembly is a snap since the halves open right up after you remove the screw. Let's see. Tidy layout and extensive use of brass. Check. The hour side only pictures 12 hours and each hour has 5 cards. The self-starting copal motor is affixed to the mechanism by a triangular aluminum plate or aluminum plate by three screws. The clock motor plate can be repositioned. The plate is clearly stamped with 50 Hz and 60 Hz. The two worm gears and the two fabric gears are clearly present and accounted for. It looks like we have a winner. Other differences. Size. The earlier Caslon detailed here has a thicker case overall, which gives it increased heft compared to the later model. You can see the thickness difference most clearly around the clock face. The power supply cord. The cord is plugged into two pins and can be removed, unlike the clock with which we are more familiar. Mr. Pike does mention this in the article. The bottom label. This is curious, because this clock is a 220 to 240 volt clock. The label is in Japanese. Perhaps it was intended for Japanese living outside of the country because at that time, as today, Japan used 100 volts for their mains, or household, electricity. Here's what the label says. 60 and here is what this label says in English. Mountaining partition for 60 cycle seconds. Mountaining partition for 50 cycle seconds. Switching by power source frequency. For switching between 50 cycle second and 60 cycle second, please set the monitor strike plate as indicated on the diagram at left. By taking out the three screws on the base of the case, then the machine. Notes The Napoleon Bonaparte quote at the beginning of this video more literally translates to What then is generally speaking the truth of history, a fable agreed upon, as it has been very ingeniously remarked? However, often people assert that he said, History is a set of lies agreed upon. I, however, have chosen to update the language to a new and improved version. History is a set of agreed upon lies. I love this quote because the history of what he actually said and what people say he said proves the wisdom of the quote that in all truth, he really did not say.